Hey there, what's up everybody, Indro here and today I'll show you how you can easily apply the neon cyberpunk effect to your photos. Our effect will revolve around adding hot pinks and bright blues as seen in neo noir genre of movies like Blade Runner. As always, you can download the finished PST, you can find the link in the description sections below. So let's get started right after the intro. Here we are in Photoshop and we'll be using this image of Tokyo. I have downloaded this from pexels.com, clicked by artist Alexander Pasaric. I hope I pronounced his name right. So this effect works really well with busy Asian streets of cities like Tokyo, Seoul or Hong Kong where you have bright neon signs and if you have rain and water on the street that really adds drama to the scene. So I'll be adding the effect to this image first and then I'll be swapping two more images to show you how this looks. Again before we get started, you need to keep in mind that different images need different treatments of the filters that I'll be showing you over here. But what we'll be doing over here will be the basic approach to every image and you can tweak here and there to match the filters and get the correct effect for the image that you are using. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. I'll right click this image and make a duplicate copy of it. Let's rename it as main image and we'll convert it into smart object so that we can apply our filters non-destructively and after we are done with the effect we can also go inside the smart object change the source image and we'll very easily apply that effect to a whole new different image okay so let's apply our magic filter and that is camera raw filter go to filter camera raw filter and as you can see, I have camera raw updated to version 12.3, so the UI is new. Everything is accordion based. But if you have older camera raw, you can see these very same things in icons side by side, so that will also work. The functionalities are exactly same with what you are seeing right here. Now, while we start, we need, just need to analyze each and every image. We just need to keep in mind that we'll be turning shades of red, orange to bright pink, and we'll be changing the shades of blue and green and indigo to shades of blue or teal, right? So with that thing in mind, we'll try to change the filters to get that desired look. So go over to the basic section and you can easily drag the temperature slider down to around minus 50 to get that initial blue hue. And also you can Crank the tint slider up to get a pink color cast. Yeah, that should be fine. Now for exposure, be very careful with the slider as different images will again need different treatment over here. If your image is too dark, you might increase the exposure a bit. But yeah, be very careful and just see how it's affecting the whole image. I'll keep it at zero for now and we'll come over here and change it if it requires any adjustments. Now. We'll also try to achieve a flat HDR look where we'll have washed out shadows and toned down highlights and we'll kind of try to achieve a neutral tone. So we'll drag the contrast down to around minus 55. We'll also drag the highlights down maybe to minus 40 and we'll increase the shadows so that we can get more details in the shadows. Plus 35 will be good. And we'll increase the whites to compensate the loss of highlights that we did by cranking this highlight slider down. We'll also decrease the blacks to make it a bit punchier because we lost the shadows by moving the shadow slider up. Now we'd also be wanting to have a dreamy or misty kind of appearance in our image. So we'll decrease the clarity to about minus 25 and also decrease the dehaze maybe to minus 5. You can increase the vibrance if you want. Now we'll go into the curves and we'll play a lot with it but before that we will make some adjustments in other areas also. First go to color mixer and over here we will change these color channels. Here you can see you have the option to control different color channels. So just as I said earlier we'll be trying to change the shades of red and orange to pink. We'll drag the red slider all the way down to minus 100 because if we drag it up you can see that the red tones are changing to shades of orange but we don't want that we want pink right so we'll drag it all the way down here we'll also decrease the orange towards the shades of red we'll keep the yellow as it is and for the green we can crank it up to the shades of blue for aqua again we'll crank it up to plus 100 now for blue you have to be very careful and you have to see how it's affecting your image as you can see it's, it's affecting a great deal on our image, so we want the teal look, maybe we'll keep it around minus 25. But this will vary according to the image that you are using. For purples again, experiment with it and see what looks best with your image. 
I think for this one minus 20 will do good. Now for magentas, you can again drag it down to get that purplish look on the magenta hues, but you can also crank it up if your image needs brightening up the magenta areas. I'll keep it to plus 60. Next go to saturation under color mixer. Over here we'll increase the saturation of the red and blue channels. So let's increase the orange a bit. Let's increase the saturation of aqua, blues, purples and magentas. Next go to the luminance and over here again you have the option to control the different channels and here if you increase the sliders these will brighten up the pixels of that specific color. So definitely we would like to brighten up the shades of red and blue. So let's crank the sliders a bit up. We'll keep yellows and greens as they are. Let's increase aqua. Same goes for blue, purple and magenta. You can see how it's affecting, it's increasing the brightness of the magenta pixels. Next come down to split toning and here in the highlights hue section enter a value of 300. It will make the hue to fall in shades of pink. Now increase the saturation to get a nice pinkish color cast on your highlights areas. Then come down to shadows and enter a value of 200 to make it go in the range of blue or teal and then increase the saturation to get a blue color cast in your shadow region. Now adjust the balance, increase it up so that the colors become a lot punchier. Now this will again vary with different images but we can keep it to plus 40 for this image. Then go to effects and decrease the vignette to around minus 15 to make our area of focus to the center. Then go to calibration and with the current process selected, decrease the primary red hue so that now the reds become kind of pink. Minus 25 should be good. Now again go to the blue primary and decrease the hue so that it falls in the shades of teal. Minus 30 should be good over here. Now we'll play with the curves. Come to the curves and make a basic S curve with the RGB curve. Make sure your point curve is selected. Click over here. So this top section of the curve represents the highlights and the bottom section represents the shadows and the center areas represents the midtones. So we'll increase the highlights a bit just like this not too much just a bit and we'll decrease the shadows a bit to make the image look a bit punchier and now go to the reds channel we'd want to increase the reds in the highlights so we'll drag this anchor point and drag it a bit like this but remember we changed our red hue to pink from this calibration section so just as we increase our reds you can see it's actually the pink that is getting brighter we do not want that much pink or red in the highlights region or in the whites so we can drag it a bit down but we would like to get a shade of pink reflection in the midtones so we will be increasing the midtones a bit just like this. Then again we would not want that much pink in the shadows so let's drag the slider down a little. Then go to the green. We do not want green anywhere in our image so we'll drag the green a little bit down and as you can see once we drag green down it will go in the shades of magenta. So we'll also drag the highlights down for the greens and also drag the shadow handle down a bit to the shades of magenta. Now let's go to blues and over here you can drag this handle to increase blues in the shadow. And you can put a point over here in the dark region and drag it down and this will make your image a bit more punchier. We'll again increase the blue in the midtones a bit and then we can decrease the blues in the highlights because in the highlights we are focusing on the pinks. Now with that done we can commit the changes and we instantly have our basic groundwork done for our hot pink and bright blue neon cyberpunk effect. Now we'll add some light blooms and light leaks to add more drama to the image. Let's right click and duplicate the layer. Let's rename it as light bloom. We'll apply a Gaussian blur. Go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and apply a Gaussian blur of 60 pixels. Click OK. We'll change the blending mode to screen. And then we'll double click this camera raw filter to edit a bit over here. Go to the basic section and decrease the exposure a bit and then we'll drag this texture clarity and dehaze slider down so that we blow out the highlights and make a nice glow out of the lights that are there in the image. Let's drag them down just like this and you can see it's blowing out the image. So to compensate that we can reduce the exposure a bit just like that and we'll hit OK. 
Now we'll adjust this glow effect from the blending options. What we want to do is we want to limit this glow only on the light regions and not on the overall image. So we can do this by blend if. Right click on the layer and go to blending options. Once the layer style window comes up, we need to focus over here in this blend diff section. Now you can control this by changing this layer sliders. What this layer sliders do is, this will limit the blending of this current layer based on the values that you are selecting in this layer. So here 0 represents pure black and 255 represents pure white. So if you drag the slider away from pure black, this will tell Photoshop that blend the parts of the image that only falls within pure white which is 255 and shades of gray not black that goes up to 72 levels. So this is how you can limit the blending of the layer with this blend if section. It's really helpful, it's really powerful. You can experiment and tweak the settings and play around it to get different variations. As you can see it's limiting the blending to bright areas but it's very choppy and very harsh so we can easily smoothen things out by holding alt or options on the keyboard and then dragging the slider to split them apart. So here you can see it's becoming very soft now. We'll adjust it a bit based on our image. And we'll also split this white slider so that we take out some of the glow from the white region. You can focus on this area and you can see how it's affecting. It's very bright now and if I drag it away you can see that the signboard is becoming a bit more clear. That looks good to me, I'll hit OK. And here is the before, here is the after. Now let's again duplicate the layer. And we'll rename it as Light Leaks. This time we'll remove the Gaussian Blur filter. Make sure you are hovering over Gaussian Blur. Right click and select Delete Smart Filter. And we'll add a Motion Blur here. Go to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur. Enter an angle of 90 degrees and a distance of 2000 pixels. Click OK and change the blending mode to linear dodge. Over here we'll again adjust the camera raw filter a bit. Double click to go inside the camera raw filter. And we'll try to make the neon signs pop only for this effect. We'll reduce the exposure a bit. We will increase the whites. We'll decrease the shadows and decrease the blacks and also increase the highlights a bit. So you can see it's just highlighting the neon signboards. Now with that done, we can hit OK. And you can see that it's adding a nice light leaks on the signboards. We can also reduce the fill if you think it's too harsh, just like this. You can also reduce the fill of this light bloom, just to reduce the effect a bit. That looks cool. So we have transformed our image into a neon cyberpunk. Also if you want to tone down this effect you can easily do that. Make sure you are hovering over this slider icon beside the camera raw filter and you can double click here to open up the blending options for the filter and you can drag the opacity down to reduce the intensity of the effect that we applied. We'll keep it to 80 and hit OK. So now as we are using smart objects, we can easily replace the source image with a new one and it will be instantly reflected with the effect that we have over here. So let's double click on any one of the smart objects and the smart object edit window will open up. Over here, let's pop in a different image. I'll take this one. This is again downloaded from Pixels by artist Life of Wu. You can find all links to these images in the description section. You can go to the profile and check out for more cool and awesome photos like these ones. I'll adjust the image commit the changes and crop it to fit the image and then we'll save the smart object and once we close it the effect will be applied to our new image we'll crop it to fit the new image here you go you can again reduce the intensity of the effect by double clicking on this icon to bring up the blending options for the filter and bring out some of the real colors. Let's change this image with another one and see how the effect applies on to that image. I'll double click to bring up the smart object edit window. I'll pop in this image which has bright neon signs. This is again downloaded from Pexels. This is by artist Vavana. I'll commit the changes, save the file and close it. So here you can see it's really blowing out the highlights because this image had a lot of more exposure than the previous ones. 
so we can adjust it simply by double clicking the camera raw filter we'll take down the exposure a bit and then we can also take down the exposure from the camera raw filters inside this light bloom and light leaks effects let's do the same for light leaks that looks nice right so this is how you can easily apply the neon cyberpunk effect to any of your images you can find the download link to the psd file that we created right now in the description sections below if you'd like to see more cool tips and tricks like this one please let me know in the comment section and if you found this video helpful please like share and subscribe my channel that would really help me keep going i'll see you in the next one and till then stay creative